Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today, we battle hornets, bees, and wasps with Bob and Travis. I also prepared Newcastle-style smelts. But first, the Mahoning Valley Boy Scouts prepare for a 100th anniversary. In 2019, Camp Stambaugh in Canfield will be celebrating its 100th anniversary. The camp originally was the farm of Henry Stambaugh, and upon his death in 1919, bequeathed the property for the use and benefit of the local association of the Boy Scouts of America. Scouting has a rich history here in the Mahoning Valley. The museum at Camp Stambaugh has a wealth of information and artifacts for Boy Scout enthusiasts. And the man who started it all was Baden Powell over in England. Yes. And Bill Moss is the museum curator here at Camp Stambaugh. And you portray him. You go all around the country portraying the founder of yes. the Boy Scouts. Yes, we do that. It's quite entertaining. <laughs> it is. And I mean, you have the English accent. Of course. And tell me, Baden Powell, why did you begin the Scout movement? What, and what year was that? Well, it was in 1907. I had the first experimental camp. But uh, in my war days, I had written several books. One was called Aids to Scouting. And when I returned to England in 1901 from one of my campaigns, I found that they were using that book in schools as a textbook. So I envisioned as a challenge to this. Well, if a book written for military scouts was in, in troil the youth to perform the same way, how much more interesting would it be for the book, boys to have the book of their own? So that's what I did. And Bill, now that uh, we are, you are back. I'm back. Welcome back. Our seance is over. Well, thank you. Um, this room has a lot of the uniforms. This is one of the original scout this uniforms. This is one of the original Boy Scout uniforms from back in the teens when the program first started. And do people donate and you just acquire these yes, things? Yes. Most of the stuff here is donated. And as new things come in or things change, you know, I change the decorations and, and the uniforms and the things we display. So what are the different ranks that you have? In, well, we in start the off Scouts? with the scout rank. That's the very first rank they earn. They learn how the scout salute and the scout handshake and a few other basic things. And then they advance on into tenderfoot, second class, first class, star life, and then the eagle. Along the way, there are many different things that they have to do, along with a bunch of electives that they get to choose on their own. The museum has so many rooms with so many artifacts and memorabilia about the scouting experience. But really, the highlight of a scout's life would be the National Jamboree. Yes, yes. Or the International Jamboree. Well, either one. Okay. The National Jamboree we have every four years. And right now, it's always being held down in West Virginia at the Summit Vector Reserve. And in here is a lot of patches and things from the very last jamboree in 2017 that the scouts do. Trading patches and acquiring these things is a big thing at the National Jamboree. And then they meet people from all across the nation, yeah. the, the world. A child is Boy Scout in the Boy Scouting program from age 11 to 18. So since the Jamboree is only every four years, there's only once during his scouting career as a scout that he would have the opportunity to go to a National Jamboree. And this year marks girls being able to join Boy Scouts, correct? Yes. We've had girls in scouting uh, in the Explorer program back from the, the 70s. And then the Venturing program is co-ed also. And that's a high adventure program, but this year, Starting this year, we allow the girls into the Cub Scouting and the Boy Scouting program. And seeing a lot of girls, are you seeing that Yes, that we're enthusiasm? seeing quite a few girls with interest in coming into the program. We have units that we're building strictly for Girl Scouts, for uh, not Girl Scouts, for girls. In and the then, Boy Scouts. And then there's also where we combine them with a, an existing unit where they have their own separate patrol or den but they're part of uh, the pack, which also has boys in it. Well, we know we're getting ready for the 100th anniversary of Camp Stambaugh, 
but it's also the 25th anniversary of a book, Boy Scouts, and this is all about the history of scouting in the Mahoney Valley, and Tony Valley Jr. is the author of this. And you know, I went through your book, and it really is interesting, all the people that made the Scouts such a success in Mahoney County. Yes. And why did you decide to publish this? Well, the reason is, is I was growing up with, as a scout and as an older, you know, older scout, I guess you could say. Yes. I worked with a lot of scouters and people that had helped in the council and at camp. And as they were moving on to the great scout master in the sky, as I put in the book, I'm thinking, who's going to remember these people? Yeah. So I started to make some notes. And in the process of doing that, I got hooked on the history. <laughs> yeah. And I started doing research and talking to people about photos, and it became kind of a passion. So it ended up being a book. So some of the people that I worked with are in there, and I'm sure I missed many people. And the pictures. People. I mean, a lot of people must have really helped you they did. dig through and find some of the, this information. Yes, very helpful because I wasn't around when those pictures were taken, obviously. But, yes. but uh, they were very helpful in digging in their attic. Even when they didn't want to, we'd say, I'd say, let's get a ladder and look right now. And they, yeah. some of them would do that. You know, to a parent looking, what, what would you say to encourage them? to really join this organization? I, I think that parents ought to allow their children um, to try the scouting program and see what they think about it. But I think the key is for the parents to get involved. Because just sending your, your child out to a program, um, uh, it's hit or miss. Getting involved, being on a committee, or at least know what's going on, you'll, you'll really buy into the program, I believe. So I think that's, that's a big plus. My parents were involved, and that was a big value for me. And the values, I think, you, you know, that you learn in scouts you know, really will help you for the rest of your life. Oh, they, they do. Uh, you pull on them all the time. And, you know, sometimes I was talking to uh, one of the people that were here. I think his name was Rick Shell, who, who's into the history. And we were talking about stuff that we saved as a scout. He found him, looked at him. I said, did it take you back to that time? And he says, absolutely. So it, it's almost, there's good memories involved. And it, it keeps you grounded to what you could do. I mean, there are many times, it's just like this book. There's sometimes I'm working on other, other projects and you feel like, I just don't have the time, or I don't have the ambition. You look at this and you're like, well, you did that, and you didn't know what you were doing. Keep working on this project. There'll be an end to it, and it should be successful. Boys, follow me if we do our best. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Well, Rude is the dude. Rudy <laughs> is one of the new owners here at the Magic Tree, and it's still the same great local flavor. Yes. And I love, yes. love your new menu items. Yes, well, you know what, Casey? We feature a lot of still the farm to table, local grass fed beef on our burgers, house made bun um, for a little entree dinner. Uh, we have a Nashville chicken sandwich with uh, homemade grits, local honey house pancakes, and for a little lighter side too, we got a fresh salad for you, uh, featuring some avocado, fresh cheese, fresh cut citrus fruit. Uh, so it's a little lighter version for you. So we kind of hit every angle uh, of your palate here with entrees, burgers, that and salads. That is right, I'm telling you, and you know what, farm to table, it extends to the beers too. You got birdfish, noble yes. creature, I mean they support local. Come on out to the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. Mayflower Wilhelm is your full-service, independent insurance agency. We work with several insurance companies to offer you choices for your insurance needs. We'll find the right product at the right price. Personal, business, farm, life, trust Mayflower Wilhelm. You focus on what's important, we'll take care of the details. Mayflower Wilhelm, close by with three locations to serve you. Five Buck Burger Mondays at Sadie's Place, inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town. Here at the Upstairs, we cater to everyone. When you come through the door, I treat you as though you're my friend. So there's all kinds of options here at the Upstairs. There's something on that menu for everyone. Great food, friendly service, very clean restaurant. There's a lot of restaurants, a lot of good restaurants in our community. So I always feel honored when someone comes here. I want everybody coming through that door to leave here with a good experience. Hi. 
Hi, I'm Elizabeth Bernard. I've been giving the people of our valley free advice for 30 years, and my message has never changed. If you're involved in an automobile accident, don't try to handle it yourself. Call a lawyer. A lawyer will be your representative, dealing with doctors, medical insurance, and all the red tape that you may encounter. Hiring a lawyer doesn't mean you'll end up in court. And remember, there are no upfront fees on personal injury cases. That's good advice. Need a lawyer? Learn more at ElizabethBernardLaw.com. Open the Jewel Box, the Courthouse Inn, organic vegetarian comfort food, handcrafted cocktails, fine wine and beer, fresh baked cakes and pies. Recharge your senses at the Courthouse Spa. Dazzling dining, artfully prepared, locally sourced ingredients, spa services. The Courthouse Inn feels like a world away, just down the road in historic Lisbon, Ohio. Is it time to update your color style? r &S Paint will assist you with your choice of over 3,400 Benjamin Moore colors. Vibrant, durable, and easy to apply. Be current, be stylish. Shop r &S Paint. You are going to love this cooking segment. One of my favorite things is the butterfly fried smelts. I absolutely love them. I always call them Newcastle smelts. Because when I go to restaurants in Newcastle like Pegley's or the Crane Room or Medora's, they're light, they're opened up. They're almost like eating a potato chip. And I saw some smelts and I bought the bag. They're cleaned, heads off. And I tried to make them at home and they just didn't taste right. So I was discussing this with my friend Anna from La Rocca's, and she says, well, you have to remove that spine. Lights go on, and I figured out that secret. So I've been removing the spine, and boy, are these delicious. You are going to love this recipe. It's really easy. Smelts are not just for Christmas Eve. You can make these every day of the year, and everyone will love them. So let's get started, and we're gonna make the butterfly fried smelts today. For this recipe, you'll need one pound bag of frozen clean smelts, two eggs beaten with one eighth cup of water, one cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of cornmeal, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of Cajun seasoning, optional, half teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper, canola or peanut oil for frying, one gallon size storage bag, a half cup of fresh chopped parsley for garnish, and lemon wedges. I've already cleaned some of the smelts. There's probably about 50 to 60 smelts per pound bag, two to three inches long. It's a little tedious, but once you get the hang of it, it moves very quickly. So what we'll do is start with a fork. Now you take the back, it's already partially opened, and then I just fling it open all the way with the fork. And then beginning at the fatter part where the head was, you just use the fork tine to take it and strip out that spine. See, right there? And then I just lay them on a paper towel to dry. So now that we've gotten the bones out of there, uh, the easiest way to do it is almost shake and bake style. I just get a bigger bag, and I like the fine cornmeal. So use a cup of that, cup of flour. Then I'm going to use, now I like a little spice, so I put some of my Slap Your Mama in. You do not have to do that if you don't want any spice. But I do like the taste of the garlic, so I'm using garlic powder. And then, oh, about a half teaspoon or so of salt. You can always add more when they come out of the fryer. And then, of course, you know me, I love my fresh ground pepper. So now we just take that and shake it all up to get it mixed thoroughly. I believe this is the easiest way to do it, rather than on a plate or in a bowl, and then you just throw it away. All right, so you can add milk if you'd like, but I think just a little bit of water to the egg wash, and just make sure you beat it really well so it's real light. 
and airy. See all the bubbles? You just want that really foamy. Okay. Now, I usually do this about 10 at a time, a dozen at a time. And then I just drop them right there in the wash. And let them soak around there a little bit. Do, 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 do. And then pull them out one at a time. Try to leave them open, let them drip, and then you just drop them right in the bag. I mean, it's a little messy, not that messy. We'll do it that way. My hands, ugh. All right, and then you just go. And use the finer cornmeal, because it sticks a little better. There you go. Now we'll take them out, and you open them up. See, and they're all covered nicely. And you just lay them right back down on another paper towel. You do go through quite a few paper towels here. But make sure that both sides, they didn't close up and they get all the good stuff on them. I'm gonna use canola oil to fry this, but peanut oil works well too. And you want the oil temperature to be about 160 to 175. And if you don't have a thermometer to measure the heat, you can also use a wooden spoon and just stick it in. And when you see the bubbles form, that means you have temperature good enough for frying. So now we have our oil ready to go. I like to start with the skin side down. So there we go. Throw these in. They're only going to be about two minutes on this side and about a minute on the other side. These cook very quickly. You don't want to crowd them. And the minute you see them start to brown, we'll flip them. Restaurant quality smelts, and they were super easy. I absolutely love these. Lemon, a little bit of parsley on top, and you are good to go. Now, some people like the cocktail sauce, but I think it fights with the fresh, clean taste of the smelts. So I squeeze some lemon, and you know what else I like for a little more heat? I like the green Tabasco sauce. And uh, I put that on a little bit of mine. And I just think it makes them that much more fun. Now remember, if you don't want the uh, hot sauce, you don't have to add it. Mm. These are delicious. Great for a crowd. Make them in batches just for uh, a few people. But people that say they don't like smelts, make sure they try these because they are going to love them. And with smelts, I think a nice cold beer is in order as a pairing. I'm using the uh, Modelo Especial. I really like the Mexican beers. And this is perfect palate cleanser to wash down those delicious smelts. Mm. You need the recipe, just go to my website, caseymaloneshow.com, for the fried butterfly smelts. You are going to love them as much as I do. Mm. Cheers. Take off with the Casey Malone Show. Woohoo! To own a business where your name's on the window can be pretty cool. That's my family. My name is Danny Catullo, and I'm the owner of Catullo Prime Meats. My grandfather started the business in 1962. I was able to take our old style butcher shop and bring it out to the new age using e-commerce to get our products to more customers. When we started shipping, there was not a ton of information out there. That's where we really worked with FedEx so they could be able to help us with our perishable shipping. We were taking on new purchases that we never had to make before boxes, coolers, ice packs, anything that was involved around shipping. So we can no longer do this with the cash that we had on hand. So because of the plum card from American Express and all of its benefits, it was a natural fit to help grow our business. And when someone calls and lets you know that you made their dinner, that's satisfaction that you can't get anywhere else.
Family Brothers is way ahead of the competition. Check out Ruli Spice World, where you can buy bulk herbs and spices, plus candies, nuts, and fillings for pennies on the dollar. Shop Ruli Brothers, home of the Famous Evening Express. I am blessed with a wonderful husband. He stuck with me through thick and thin, and he's a fantastic father. So when he needed long-term care, not just any place would do, we did our research. Everyone said, trust the name you know, Briarfield. With all those locations, there's always one close. That made it easy for me and the kids to visit more often, Briarfield. Trust the name you know, Briarfield. Proudly serving the Valley for over 20 years. We've been in the Mahoning County for 70 years. We're not going anywhere. Bree and I have been in this business since we were kids. My grandpa built the business off of loyalty, honesty, and trust. My grandfather, my father, they have a legacy here. We have learned all of these great things from both of them that, you know, we will be sure to keep the legacy going into the fourth generation. Get real, get Kamara. Four for five till six. Happy hour at Sadie's Place inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town. At Rooley Brothers, the family is in the store. Meats, deli, produce, even the checkout. We work hard to ensure that you get the best products at a personal shopping experience. At Rooley Brothers Markets, our customers are our top priority. Our family is in the store. RNS Paint is a locally owned paint store and not a paint department. Inspiration comes easy when choosing exciting Benjamin Moore colors and finish. Over 3,400 vibrant and durable colors are yours at RNS Paint. Well, in the late summer and the early part of the fall is when you really start seeing bee infestations. And uh, I've known Bob the Bee Man since my radio days when you would come on with the Friendly Trapper exactly. and we would teach everybody about uh, handling bees and the good bees and the bad bees. Well, I had a bee issue crevice in my house and be, uh, Bob the bee man took good care of me. So now we're tailing them. And uh, this is really your busy time of year, August and September, huh? Right, because all your yellow jackets are up to full strength right now. And if you have a yellow jacket nest around, August and September is when you're going to find them because uh, they go kind of into like a frenzy to get ready for winter, okay? Because they die out. Actually, they starve out. And it's usually like late November they'll actually starve out because once it drops to below 50 degrees, they can't fly, so they can't go out and get any food and they can't store enough food to survive. So that's why they go into this frenzy right now. And like I had uh, yellow jackets. And those are not good bees, correct? Those are not the pollinators. No, no, they're 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 not the pollinators. And uh, whereas the honeybees are, and a lot of people are confused about that. Actually, you mentioned good bees, bad bees. Your yellow jackets are about the worst bee that you can have around because. They don't only sting, they do a lot of damage uh, because uh, as you'll see shortly, they actually eat through drywall to get into living living areas. Travis is Bob's grandson and you have joined the family business. I joined about 12 years ago. I've been with him for quite a while. How much have you learned from your grandpa? I mean, that's really cool. Well, I mean, he's forgotten more than I know, but I think the, <laughs> I'd like to think I've learned a little bit. And uh, he was with them when they fixed my house last week. Now. Right here is a hole on the side of this house, and this was probably what, from cable or some kind of satellite setup or something like that? Yeah, the homeowner, the, the previous homeowner had a satellite that they ran a cable through there, and when they pulled the cable out, they neglected to plug that hole back in. So yellow jackets always build within three feet of their nest. They do always build above the nest. So when they're behind a wall, you have to use a powder on them. So since these aren't honeybees, we aren't worried about saving them. If these were honeybees, I'd be saving them. But since they're yellow jackets, we're going to exterminate them. And I know he's got it into the nest. Like I said, we got all these snow bees coming out and we got other ones. We got other ones. We got other ones that are trying to go back in there. All right, our next house is a nest of bald faced hornets. And unfortunately, Angela, this is your situation, huh? Yes, unfortunately. How long has that been growing? Uh, it seems though it's been growing over the summer. So, I mean, we didn't really notice it till about a month ago. And then unfortunately my mom was stung. Even Bob is wearing the safety net. And uh, you were just telling me that the hornets actually do eat a lot of the mosquitoes and the bugs we don't like. Right, actually they're beneficial, except if they're too close to the ground because if they're high in a tree, I'm gonna say like 25 feet or higher, 
they're good to have there because they eat mosquitoes and other insects. In fact, they even eat yellow jackets. And actually, you can see it if you get a close-up. You can see where they're expanding out on the outside down towards the bottom there. You can see that where it's kind of stepped out a little bit. That's a new layer of paper that they're putting on there. Yeah, I was getting the hornets off of me, and I saw the yellow jacket in there. Oh my gosh, so it's a two-for-one. Angela, we're here on the right day. Okay, so now, do you just shoot that with powder, yep. and that's it? Yep. How many do you think will be down there? This looks like a little bit of a smaller nest, so I'd say 500 to 1,000. Well, Travis, that was awesome. And you, man, you just got in there with that scraper, and, and you got that nest right out of there. I suppose I was probably nervous for the first 500 of these that I've done, but you get used to it after a while. So, and then you are a beekeeper, right? Yes, I am a beekeeper. In fact, I was at the fair for two days and I, I raised bees. I, I, have, I render the honey and I sell honey at a store in Austin. Town. But can I say one other thing? So many people will get a can of hornet and wasp spray and, that, and that's the worst thing you can do because that actually traps them into your wall and they'll go into your living area, okay? If don't mess with it, call the professional. Let Bob and, and Travis do it. And uh, I, I thank you guys. This has really been informational. Great. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Casey. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.